Amen. We give honor and praise to the living God tonight, for this is a final look at the Word of God for 2022 with Prayer Changes Things Ministry, Pastor Lois Antoine, and yours truly, Apostle Ellie Anderson, as your Bible teacher. And tonight we want to settle ourselves in a place of safety by knowing the Word of God for ourselves, according to Second Timothy 2.15. And we look at the Word of God tonight from the book of Psalms 119, and I want to quote you several scriptures so that you will get the importance of what it is that the Spirit of God is saying to us. Psalms 119, beginning with verse number 9. Wherewither shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereunto according to thy word. Will With my whole heart have I sought thee, O oh, let me not wander from thy commandments. Thy word have I hid in my heart, that I might not sin against thee. Verse number 12 says, Blessed art thou. And I want you to hear me tonight. O oh, Lord, teach me thy statutes. Verse number 13 says, With my lips have I declared all thy judgments of thy mouth. I have rejoiced in the way of thy testimonies as much as in all riches. Verse 15 says, I will meditate in thy precepts and have respect unto thy ways. Verse 16 from Psalms 119 says, I will delight myself in the statutes. I will not forget thy word. Yes. I need you to hear me tonight because this is our final teaching. And so in Psalms 119 Verse 33, it says, Teach me, O Lord, the way of thy statutes, and I shall keep it unto the end. 34, Give me understanding, and I shall keep thy law. Yea, I shall observe it with my whole heart. 35, Make me to go in the path of thy commandments, for therein do I delight. 36, says, Incline my heart unto thy testimonies, and not to covetousness. 37. Turn away mine eyes from the whole in vanity, and quicken thou me in the way. And then I want to read to you also in Psalms 119, and now verse number 105. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet, and a light unto my path. Verse 29. Thy testimonies are wonderful, Therefore does my soul keep them. And I want you to hear me tonight because this is our final study. And we need to get back involved in the word of the living God. And so Psalms 119 and 130 says, The entrance of thy words giveth light. It giveth understanding unto the simple. I opened my mouth and panted, for I longed for thy commandments. Look thou unto me. And be merciful unto me, as thou use to do unto those that love thy name. Verse 133. And I want you to hear me tonight. It is important for you to know. Order my steps in thy word, and let my iniquity have dominion over me. Not, not. Let me read that again. Order my steps in thy word, and let not any iniquity have dominion over me. Amen. Deliver me from the oppression of man. So I will keep thy precepts, make thy face to shine upon thy servant, and teach me thy statutes. Verse 136, rivers of waters run down mine eyes, because they keep not thy law. Mm -hmm. And so tonight we're looking now at the powerful word of the living God. As we move forward now into this word that God has given us to bring conclusion in 2022. We're looking now into God's Word, ending in 2022 and beginning in 2023. So tonight we ask the question, what is the Bible? How do we know that it is indeed the true Word of the living God? And so tonight I want you to understand that as we move into this thing called the Word of God, I need you now to prepare yourself to take a new look 
at the things that God has prepared for us in his word. The Bible is the written word of God, and thus the ultimate set of guiding principles, governing all areas of life for the people of God. Through these writings, God communicates his will, his laws, his nature, and his saving purpose to humanity. The Bible is a compilation of 66 books and letters written by more than 40 authors during a period of approximately 1,500 years. The original text of the Bible was communicated in just three languages, the language of the Hebrew, the language of the Greeks, and Aramaic. And I need you to hear me tonight. The Old Testament was written for the most part in Hebrew with a small percentage in Aramaic. The New Testament was written in Greek. The English Bible comes from the word Biblia, which is Latin for Bibelos, which in the Greek means book or books. And you and I both know now that there are 66 books in the Word of God, 39 in the Old and 27 in the New. And these are the sacred writings of God to bring us into favor and to repent and to come out of sin and to come into righteousness. Right. This book has been divided into poetry, the book of wisdom, the book of prophecy, the gospels, and the epistles in the New Testament. Originally, the Holy Scripture was written uh, on scrolls, as you know, and later on parchment until the invention of the Codex, and that Codex is now what we call the book. The inspired word of God for this season, for us, all the way from January up to now, December, Christians and Jews have been called people of the book throughout history. Both Judaism and Christianity are based on the word of the living God. A key doctrine of Christianity is that it is inerrant. In other words, there are no mistakes. There are no errors in the word of God. The word of God is true from the book of Genesis to the book of Revelation. Amen. 66 Amen. accurate books that have been labeled and written by the spirit of the living God using men and women of old to bring us into a place where we understand and know the true and living God. The Bible itself claims to be the inspired word of God, or God breathe. 2 Timothy 3 and 16. Hear me very clearly tonight. 2 Timothy 3 and 16. All scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we are wrong and teaches us to do what is right. 2 Peter 1, 16-21 For we were not making up clever stories when we told you about the powerful coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. We saw his majestic splendor with our own eyes when we received honor and glory from God the Father. The voice from the majestic glory of God said to him, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. And so tonight we're looking now at what the Bible is all about and what the Bible is saying to each of us in the story of salvation. The central message of the theme of the Bible is God's plan of salvation, his way of providing deliverance from sin and spiritual death through the repentance and faith in the Lord Jesus Christ on Calvary's tree. Listen, in the Old Testament, the concept of salvation is rooted in Israel's deliverance from Egypt in the book of Exodus. And you know what happened when Moses led the children of Israel out of Egypt and into the Red Sea on dry side, bringing them into the promised land that God had promised their forefather, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The New Testament reveals the source of salvation, Jesus Christ. By faith in Jesus, the promised Messiah. And I need you to hear me tonight because you need to know that there is no other messianic promise from any other religion that is recorded in the world except the word of God found in the word of God in 66 books 
call the Bible. Listen, believers are saved from God's judgment of sin and its consequences, which is eternal death. When you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and his atoning blood, for he was the perfect lamb of God, yes. and he came to save you and to save me. And I want you to understand tonight as we take this final look at the word of God, we will find that the Bible, the whole Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, God reveals himself to humankind. We discover his nature and his character. We discover his love and his justice, his forgiveness and his truth. And many have called the Bible a guidebook for living the Christian faith. Again, I quote to you Psalms 119.105 that simply says, Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. And tonight I want you to understand that we're moving now into 2023, but we're not leaving out the powerful word of the living God. Here we see the history of the Bible. On so many levels, the Bible is an extraordinary book. Let me say that again. The Bible is an extraordinary book from its diverse content and literal styles to the miraculous preservation down through the ages where men and women have seen the power of God in their lives, where they were saved, delivered, and set free. Yeah. While the Bible is certainly not the oldest book in history, it is the only ancient text with existing manuscripts that number in the thousands. Can I share with you that every manuscript that was discovered was found to be true as the word of the living God. In the ancient days, the author of the Bible recorded it and messages with whatever resources were available at the time. The scriptures themselves reveal some of the materials used. And again, I want you to understand that they were engravings in clay, inscriptions on tablets of stone, uh, ink and papyrus, and parchment, leather, and metals. So we understand now that all of this was used to bring us into this real book called the Holy Bible. Yes. And we say that it is called basic instructions before leaving earth. In other words, you need to know what this book is all about in order to have a future with the Spirit of God that's coming in our future times. So tonight, I want you to understand that the Bible unfolds as a divine love story between the creator God and the object of his love, you and me, past, present, and future, which is called humankind. In the pages of the Bible, we learn of God's interaction with humans. We discover his purposes and plans from the beginning of time throughout history. And we look at now the stories of men and women who have encountered the very presence of God, and what they found was the love of God to save, to deliver, and to bring them out of destruction. And so tonight I want you to understand that we are now moving to the deeper life in the word of the living God, getting ready now to close out one year and move into a new year with the power of the word of God in our lives. And so tonight I want you to know that there is an understanding that you need to know. Do not confuse knowledge with understanding. One may know much, yet understand little. Amen. Knowing is the fruit of diligence. And I need you to hear me tonight so that you can grasp this in study, while understanding is the fruit of using knowledge in life. Understanding of God's word is given through the Holy Spirit to those who seek to obey that word, the word of the living God. And we come to understand the Bible by it, in fact, standing under its commands. Are you hearing me tonight? You may not notice such growth in understanding in yourself, but you will profit from it. And the church will be blessed because of it. Listen to me tonight. The preacher that's what I said. The preacher and saint should both receive spiritual maturity from the word of God in the making of the new life in which the saints become the hearer and doer of the word. And this is what James told us in his book, that we need to not only just hear, but we need to also do.
do. Yeah. Then yeah. again, we must understand not only is the Bible giving us understanding, but the Bible is giving us wisdom. And wisdom cannot be acquired directly. Wisdom cannot be taught by one to another. Are you hearing me tonight? Understanding uh, which is nourished by experience, deepened by persistent effort to better obedience, gradually mature into wisdom. Wisdom is understanding put into the service of love. Wisdom comes slowly and with age. It comes if it comes at all. all right. This is why maturity and growth in the word of God helps the believer natural life to become strong in the flesh, just like his spiritual man grows in the deeper truths while studying the word of God. And notice this, the Bible said, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that give it to man liberally yeah. and upbraid it not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, yeah. nothing wavering. For he that wavered is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. That's found in James chapter 1, verses 5 through verse number 7. Not only that, but as we move into the deeper word of God tonight, knowing that this is the final study for the word of God for this year, I want you to understand that the word of God is quick yeah. and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intent of the heart. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight, but all things are uh, made open unto him, to the eyes of him with whom we have to do. And that's found in the book of Hebrews, the book of Hebrews chapter 4, verses 12 and 13. The reason given for the one careful scrutiny of his life involves the reality that God is intent on scrutinizing it. His word is quick, living. His word is the first in the Greek and in emphasis is the first and the last. God's word is not old or archaic. Are you hearing me? It is as fresh as it was written 2,000 years ago. The Bible says it is not inept or inactive. It is powerful, mm -hmm. active. It reaches into the inner secrets of man's mind to discern even his thoughts and intents of his heart. Likewise, God's eyes sees man as though he was naked, unable to hide behind any excuse or pretense. And this is why you and I need to get into the word of God, that we can be bathed by the word of God and find ourselves delivered and clean. According to John 15 and 3, he says, you are clean through the words which I have spoken unto you. Therefore, tonight, let me quote again from Psalms 119, verse 11. Thy word have I hid in my heart, yes. that I might not sin against thee. So tonight, hear me. The written word, Dabar, is an all-embracing term for God's revelation in any form. Word, Amma, might also be translated promise though the translation does not distinguish it from the preceding terms to whom and what meaning it is, we understand now that this is God's word moving into our innermost being, cleansing, washing, and renewing us, standing us upright that we can be delivered from the flesh and move into the things of God. It comes from the verb to say, and it assumes that the content of revelation is from the very mouth of God himself. Other terms that seem to speak of God's word include ways, names, and faithfulness. Because of this exaltation of the word of God, we find ourselves in a place tonight where we need to hide it in our hearts. According to what I just read, Psalms 119 and verse 11, we need to love it and understand that as we love it, it will also love us. Mm -hmm. And so tonight, I want you to understand that we are at a place now where we are going now out of the old into the new. But let's maintain the revelation of the word of God 
which is the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the word of God. Yeah. According to John chapter 1, verses 1 and 2. And let me read that in your hearing. St. John chapter 1, verses 1 and 2. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God. Yeah. And the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. This is none other than the Lord Jesus Christ. The word of God who is Jesus Christ, is absolutely indispensable. You need him to bring you into the house of God once more through the power of his blood on Calvary's tree. And so tonight when we look at this word, when we look at the word of God and see it as his only begotten son, for Jesus Christ to us is the only intercessor according to Isaiah 59 and 16. Let me say that again. The word of God God says he's the only intercessor, Isaiah 59 and 16. Not only that, but he is the only remedy for our salvation, John 3 and 14. Not only that, but he's our only nourishment, according to John 6 and 35. Not only that, but he's the only source of truth, according to John 6, 67 and 68. Not only that tonight, but he's our only savior. There are no other saviors in the world, in the past, in the present, nor coming in the future. This is the one that the Father recommended for you to be saved, delivered, and set free. Not only that, but he's our only foundation, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 11. For you understand tonight, as we conclude this lesson for the end of the year, that it's all about Jesus. Yes. Let me say that again. Yes. It's all about Jesus. And so Jesus Christ is the author, according to Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2 and 3. Listen to me carefully. Looking unto Jesus, yes. author and finisher of yes. our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross despising the shame and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God for consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds what are you saying apostle tonight that this is the reason why we're studying this book this is the reason why we're looking at it because in it we find the very son of the living God who is the author and finisher. In other words, he's the developer of our faith. Yeah. Therefore, when the saint goes before the living word, he's entitled to tell Jesus everything. This is why you need to know him for yourself. What can you tell him, apostle? You can tell him the perils of life. Matthew 8 and 25. You can give him the questions that are in your heart, yes. according to uh, Matthew 24 and 3. You can tell him about the sickness that is in life and that you need to be healed, according to Mark chapter 1 and verse 30. You can tell him the difficulties about life that's happening to you, yes. according to Mark 6, 35 and 36. And the needs that are in your life, according to Mark 10 and 51. Listen to me tonight as we move now to that very precious thing that is the son of the living God. We can tell him the failures that are in our life so that he can correct them yes. and bring us to a rock. That rock is himself. Yes. According to Mark 9 and 28, Luke 5 and 5. Listen, we can tell him about our family troubles that are in our lives Amen. and let him fix it and bring our families back in unity. According to Luke 9 and 38. Then we can tell him about the victories ah, that are in our lives. According to Luke 10 and 17, the things that he has done to bring us into a place where we can declare Jesus is Lord and every knee must bow and every tongue must confess that he is Lord. Not only that, but can I share with you tonight that we can tell him the disappointments that are in our lives according to Luke 24 and 18 and allow him to fix it and to bring it up and to bring it out and to set us on prayer ground. Then we can tell him about the bereavements in our lives, the ones that we've lost, the people that are now gone before us. According to John eleven twenty one, he will tell us that he's the resurrection and he's life. 
If we believe on him, even though we were dead, yet shall we live again. And so tonight, I want you to understand that this book is all about him. The Old Testament tells us that he is the God of the old. And the New Testament tells us he's the Savior of the new. He comes to reveal the Father and to let us know that he is the Son of the living God a part of the triune God, God the Father, God the Word, and God the Holy Ghost. Therefore, the Word of God says to us, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable. Are you hearing me tonight? Always abounding in the work of the Lord, yeah. for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. And that's found in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 15 and verse 58. So I'm telling you tonight, on this night, the 27th of December, be steadfast yes. and unmovable. Yes. Hold to what you know, you, that the word of God is going to move you yes. to a higher height and deeper death. Yes. Listen to me, deeper life, Hallelujah. deeper life, deeper life that in the word is. brings yes. to the saint of God the realm of spiritual maturity. And you and I by now should have grown oh. quite a bit. Yes. Lord, have yes. mercy. Yes. Word for yes. word, yes. language yes. for language, knowing oh, now yes. that he loves us to the point that he gave his only begotten son. Yes. That whosoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Therefore, when you think about this deeper life tonight, I need you to understand that it's deeper life in fruitfulness. Mm -hmm. In other words, you're going to bear fruit. Lord, have mercy. According to 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 10. Not only that, but we're going to move in Christ. And he's going to move in us. According to Ephesians 4 and 15. We sang the song many years ago. When you look at me, you see not what I used to be, but you see Jesus. Why? Because he's the image and the model that I'm acquiring and moving into. Not only that, but he brings us into perfection. We are striving every day to be perfected in the things of God. According to Hebrews 6 and 1, listen to you and listen to me. We know that we're not perfect, but we're striving for yes, perfection. Yes, Are you yes, hearing me? Yes. We're moving now into maturity. Yes. We're moving now into growth. Understanding that through this powerful word of the living God, he's bringing us into a place where we grow in him. That's understanding it. that That's every it. day is going to be a day of jubilee. Not only that, but it's a point where we begin to desire the word of God. Mm. According to 1 Peter 2 and 2. I don't know about you, but do you really love the word enough that you're willing to study it? Enough that you're willing to lay down everything else and put up the word of God in the priority of number one in first place. Not only that, but as we begin to move into the priority of his word, we come into the grace and knowledge of the word of God, according to Second Peter 3 and 18. Listen to me tonight, as we accept the word of God in Christ, as the saints of God, you will grow like the boy Samuel in 1 Samuel 2, 26, who was in the temple because his mom brought him there to be presented to the Lord. And when the Spirit of God spoke to him, he got up and went to Eli and said, I heard you, you call me. But Eli said, no, I didn't call you, go back. He heard it again until the third time. Elijah said, when you hear it again, say to the Lord, here am I. And what I want you to do tonight is to say to the Lord, here am I. I'm willing to hear your word. Yes, I'm willing to yes, grow and yes, to move yes, forward yes. in the things of God. I'm willing to stand on the promises of God oh, that are yea yes. and amen. amen. Not only that, but you will also grow like John the Baptist, according to Luke 1 and 80. Here is a young man who grew up in the temple, who grew up understanding the word of the Jewish faith, but he also understood that men needed to repent and to come now clean to the things of the living God. And so you and I now are going to have to clean up come on. our spiritual minds, our spiritual hearts in the word of the living God and live the life 
that men and women will understand that they too need to come yes. to this thing yes. called the word of the living God. Not only that, but we'll be like the Apostle Paul, who once did not know God, but on the road to the masters, mm -hmm. found out that Jesus was real. And I want you to understand something tonight. It's time for us not to put things down, but to take things up. Mm -hmm. Moving now into that place where the reality of this thing is that if they found him, you and I must also find him. Yes. Search him with all thy heart. And when you search for him with all thy heart, he says you will find me. Yeah. So now I want you to also be like the Thessalonians in Second Thessalonians 1 and 3. They understood what Paul was preaching, but they said to him, we're going to search this thing out for ourselves. Yes. So tonight, what am I saying to you? I don't want you to take my word. I want you to look it up for yourself. Yeah. Get involved in studying the word of God day by day. And as you study day by day, you will be refreshed mm. and you will be oiled up for whatever is going to happen in life. Listen to me tonight. Settling for the written and living word of God will allow the saints to do several things. Listen to me tonight. If you study this word aright, you will put away childish things. Amen. According to 1 Corinthians 13 and 11. Not only that, but you will cultivate an understanding in the word of God. 1 Corinthians 14 and 20. And no one can deceive you when you know the word for yourself. Amen. Not only that, but you will strive after the Christ idea. According to Ephesians 4 and 13. Remember now, this is not a church where we run it. This is a church that is run by the Lord Jesus Christ under the auspice of the Holy Spirit. So we're not going to take any credit. We're not going to take any honors. We're going to give all the glory to the Lord Jesus That's Christ it. for it. what he's doing for us, bringing us back into the Father's house. Not only that, but when we begin to get this word, we will be partaking of the deeper truths of the word of God found in the Holy Word from Genesis to the book of Revelation. Aren't you curious to understand what happened in the beginning? And aren't you curious to understand what's going to happen in the ending? The only answer is found in the word of the living God. And because of that, we understand that when we get into the word of the Lord, we know he says, deliver us from evil. Mm -hmm. Deliver us from the hand of the devil. Deliver us from temptation. Because it's there. And because it's there, you need to know the word of God to cover yourself yes. and protect yourself from the hand of the enemy that's found in first john chapter 2 and verse 14 then by not knowing the bible hear me tonight then by not knowing the bible the word of god uh you will attempt to move but you won't go anywhere you know why? Because this is a spiritual thing. And because it's a spiritual thing, you need the spiritual word of God Amen. to move you yes, into that place yes. where you can stand even in the times of trials and tribulations. And because you don't want to study the word of God, listen to me tonight. It brings us to a place of spiritual immaturity. Lord have mercy. And that's what we have, a whole lot of immature saints. Why? Because they're not rapidly developing in the word of the living God. Therefore, when you are immature in the things of God, it brings you the inability to receive strong doctrine. That's why a lot of people leave in churches. Oh, it's too hard. It's too strong. No, this is what's going to bring you out and bring you up to the things of God, Amen. to receive the strong word of God. Yes. Paul said, no more milk, but you need meat in order to strive right. and to move forward in the things of God. And when you don't understand the word of God, it necessitates immature tutelage. In other words, nobody can tell you anything. Why? Because you already know everything. But can I share with you tonight that you don't know the things of God until you get into the word of of the living God. And it also brings you to an instability to hold to your faith. Mm. Listen to me. I don't know about you, but faith is all that we have. The word of God said, now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things 
not seen. Without it, you're not going to make it. That's faith it. moves us now to the heart of God and moves us to the word of God. Faith tells us that it's going to be all right yeah. because we're holding the hand that created everything. Lord have mercy. When you are immature, it's a continuance in the primary department. It's time to grow up. It's time to mature. It's time to graduate into the things of God. Coming out of the basement, moving to the first floor. But remember, there are still many floors to go. Mm. And if you get involved in the word of the living God, you're going to grow into the things of God. Therefore, I want you to understand that the Bible has an answer for that. And it's in 2 Timothy 2.15. Listen to what it said. Steady. To show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, mm -hmm. rightly dividing the word of truth. And so tonight, you must understand that if you're going to divide the word of truth, you need to know the tools of the scripture. And that's what we're going to talk about tonight as we get ready to end 2022 and begin 2023. Each day, each day, each day, I cannot emphasize that enough. Each day, they studied the scriptures to see whether or not these things were so. Where is that found, Apostle? Acts 17, 11, and 12. Here we find, again, the Thessalonians were more apt than the Bereans. They understood that, listen, Paul, I hear what you're saying, but if you don't mind, we're going to look this up for ourselves. And you have 66 books to look into from the book of Genesis to Malachi, from the book of Matthew to Revelation, to study the things of God and to know for yourself what God is saying to you from the word of God. Again, without error, as I said to you, there are no errors in the word of God. That's true. Now, let me quote this again so that you will understand the book of Acts chapter 17, verse 11. Now, these Jews were more better disposed and more noble than those in Thessalonica, for they were entirely ready and accepted and welcomed the message concerning the attainment through Christ of eternal salvation in the kingdom of God with the inclination of mind and eagerness, searching and examining the scriptures daily to see if these things were so. Amen. And so tonight, I need you to search. So tonight, I need you to look. So tonight, I need you to move now into the research department and get involved in the word of God for yourself. But before you do that, let's pray. Pray that the spirit of God will open the faculties of your mind and to give you an understanding in his word. Pray that this is the time now that you will see the spiritual things that God is trying to reveal in the natural so that you can have joy evermore. Listen to me tonight. When you pray, that opens the door, and then you begin to read the Word of God. And when you read the Word of God with understanding, guess what's happening? You're beginning to mature and to grow. Listen to me. For the nature of the Bible, listen to me, is found in John 21 and verse 25. John chapter 21, verse 25. Listen to this. There are still many other things that Jesus did. Yes, if they were written about in detail, I doubt that there will be room enough in the entire world to hold the books to record them. Although consistently of thousands of pages, the Bible can be viewed as a micro dot of divine revelation for all people, Jew and Gentile. Are you hearing me tonight? That this is the book that has the volumes in it that will bring you into the enlightenment of the word of God from the prison to the throne. Mm. And all I need you to do now is to move forward. Make a declaration, not a resolution, but a declaration mm. that you're going to move now into the word of the living God. And that 2023, you're going to do what you didn't do in 2022. Amen. Hold to the hand of God yeah. and move into the word of God so that you can be declared righteous yeah. in the things of God. Therefore, tonight, can I share with you that the Bible is like a rich gold mine. When mining the scriptures, it teaches and students that they must dig deeply into the rich text to avoid the temptation to dig long, shallow trenches, which only superficially touches on a number of points. 
you need to know the whole book. Right. And the whole book is from Genesis to Revelation. Not just the New Testament, but all of it yeah, is involved yeah. for you to grow. And then prayer and discipline causes us to go deeper and restrain us from collecting Bible trivia instead of preparing a Bible study that teaches the student in the midst of the Holy Spirit what God is trying to say to us. And so tonight, I want you to know as we move forward in this study that this is the season, this is the time for us to get closer to the things of God so that the Spirit of God can change our hearts yeah. so that He can renew our minds. And I want you to know tonight that as you do that, you're going to understand that this is the Word of the Living God that is bringing you every level and every step higher to the things that will move away from you so that every hindrance can be bound mm -hmm. and the joy of the Lord will be knowing that I know his word. And so tonight, listen to me very carefully. This is a time now that you must get back. That's what I said. You must get back into that study and know for yourself that you are learning from the Holy Spirit, the word of the living God. We should not disdain the discipline of the Lord, according to Hebrews 12 and 5 in our lives, in the Spirit, and especially in our Bible study. Do not start studying without inviting the Holy Spirit to have the right of way and to teach you what needs to be taught through the power of God's Word. Because He is the third part of the triune God, He knows what God wants. He knows how God deals with us when we know the truth. It will set us free. So tonight, I need you to hear me. We should develop a question asking orientation. Let me say that again. We should develop a question asking orientation to Bible study by asking many questions pointing to the basic question. What is the intent of the biblical author? And some examples of the questions that you should ask and you should know is what is the main theme of this passage? The Lord is my shepherd, and I shall not want. What, what are you saying? Well, I'm saying that the Lord is my shepherd, and he's leading me in the path of righteousness. He's leading me beside the still water. So now the focus is above mm. and not below. Mm -hmm. So when we look at these passages, we're going to understand now what the focus is. The focus is not just on the sheep. The focus is on the sheep. Not only that, but we should know who is speaking. Yeah. When you're reading the word of God, somebody is speaking. And you need to know who's speaking. Not only that, but you need to know about whom he is speaking. Mm -hmm. Whether it's about you or the past mm -hmm. or something that's in the future. You need to understand that not every promise is a promise for you. That's right. You need to know for a fact that the word of God speaks of the old and brings us into it. To tell us the stories of those men and women who by faith moved into the things of God. Yes. But not every promise he gave them, he's going to give you. That's right. I need you to know tonight. So therefore, you need to know about whom uh, they're speaking and why they're speaking. Not only that, but you need to know which is the key verse, whether it's verse number five or verse number seven. There's a key verse that God is giving you, and that key verse is telling you exactly what God wants you to know. Not only that, but you need to know what word is most often used, whether it's faith, whether it's grace, are you hearing me, or whether it's truth, when they repeat it over and over, you need to understand that there's importance in that situation, mm -hmm. and you need to grasp it with all of your heart. Not only that, but you need to know uh, what does the passage teach about the Lord Jesus Christ mm -hmm. in type. In shadow, uh, are you telling me tonight? Yes, because we say that he's the lamb. We say that he's the lion of the tribe of Judah. We say he's the first and the last. We say he is the beginning and the ending. So you understand that these are symbols. And when they talk about it, you need to know that they're talking about him. And that he is the object of our love. Right. He's the object of our faith. He's the object that we believe and hold to with all 
of our hearts. And so as we understand this, we're saying, is this scripture calling me to repent of any sin? Or is the scripture telling me about others who have sinned mm -hmm. and repented? And you need to understand, do I have a commandment to obey the word of God? And the answer is yes, you are commanded to obey the word of God. Then again, is there a promise to claim or is there a prayer to pray? I need you to understand that you need to know when these things are at your service and then you need to know them. So tonight, hear me as we bring you to another section. What are the important passages of the Bible for you to study? Mm. That's up to you and the Holy Spirit. Are you hearing me? We can give you sage advice, but the best thing for you to do is to pray and seek the Lord for yourself and begin to study the word of God as he's given it to you. For me, my recommendation would be the book of Proverbs because there are 31 chapters and there are 31 days in the month. You can read a chapter per day. My thought would also be the book of Psalms because the book of Psalms represent the Torah of the Bible and gives us what the deliverance of God's word is all about. And you need to know what it means for you in life. In the New Testament, I would read the book of John. Why? Because that's where salvation is brought as well as the book of Romans. Are you hearing me today? So you need to know then for yourself, when you get involved in this, you need to put everything else down and pick up the word of God. Then again, if we look at the Old Testament in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 18, verses 18 through 22, the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 18, verses 18 through 22, there's directions. The Bible says that God told Moses, I'm going to send a prophet like unto you. Mm -hmm. And if you hear him, you're going to live. Not only that, but in Romans 15, Romans 15, 4 through 7. And let me read that to you because I want you to hear me tonight how important it is for you to know what it is that God is saying in the total word of God. Are you hearing me tonight? Romans chapter 15, verses 4 through 6. I'm going to read. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scripture might have hope. Now the God of patience and consolation grant you to be like-minded one toward another according to Christ Jesus, that ye may with one mind and one mouth glorify God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And verse number seven, wherefore receive ye one another as Christ also received us to the glory of God. So what are you saying tonight, Apostle? Every scripture that is written, both old and new, is found right here. It says, for whatsoever things were written aforetime, mm -hmm. were written for our learning, mm -hmm. that we through patience and comfort of the scripture might have hope. What are you saying, Apostle? In the story of Joseph, from his birth to the coat, from the coat to the prison, from the prison to the throne, there's a story for you to learn. The obedience of God moving in the fact of tribulation, moving in the fact of trials and coming out believing God. So yes. he came from the prison to the throne. Yes. Lord have mercy. Hallelujah. Look at the Samson who was the strongest man according to the word of God through the power of God who failed in miserably in life but at the last end mm. found hope and yes. was saved yes. by the power of God. And so I need you to know you need to know these stories. Look at Jonah trying to escape his assignment but right. God picked him up and brought him to Nineveh, where he preached the gospel and saved a city. So tonight, I want you to understand that you need to know these things, and they're found in the word of the living God. Again, listen to me. The Bible, capital B, capital I, capital B-L-E, again, is simply basic instructions before leaving earth. You need a guidebook. This is your GPS to help you get from earth to heaven. And the only way you're going to do that is to know the word of God yes, for yes, yourself. Yes, yes, yes. So tonight, I need you to know that as we get ready to come to a conclusion, you need to know that the Bible presents three classifications, eternity past, eternity present, and eternity future. Lord have mercy. Only the Bible has that qualification. It tells us eternity past. What happened in the Garden of Eden, it tells us in the present 
what the Lord Jesus did and tells us in the future what he's going to do. Mm -hmm. And I need you to understand tonight that because of that, that gives us a divine hope of understanding the word of God and bringing it into a place where we need to know what the Bible really is all about. So tonight, hear me, God's book on the story of creation, death, the fall of man, way back to the Father's house. Mm. That's what he's bringing us to. How to get back into fellowship. Yes, uh, yes, how yes. to get back into relationship. How to get back into kinship mm. with the things of God. And the only way to do that is with the truth, the way, and the life. And that would be the Lord Jesus Christ himself. So tonight, I need you to know the book of books that takes us into eternity past, brings us into eternity present, takes us to eternity future, that will bring us into life and joy into our hearts, transform our minds as we just read the word of God day by day. You can pick it up by reading it and understanding it through the unction of the Holy Spirit. So I need you to know, listen to me very carefully tonight. What about the ark? What about the ark and Noah? It was there to save mankind, mm -hmm. but only eight went in. Only. Why? Because eight believed That's God. And so tonight it. I want you to understand that this is a time now for you to move forward. Get ready to understand that God has a way. And uh, old folks say, I like the way he does it. So tonight I need you to know that finally, as we get ready to bring it to a close tonight, to understand that this is very important for you to know, you need to know the doctrine of the Word of God as found in the Bible so that nobody, me or anyone else, can deceive you That's on right. what it is that amen, you need to know. Amen, amen. First of all, when you know the statement of faith, what you believe, then nobody can change it. Mm. Once you know it from the heart, yeah. transformed in the mind, then nobody can change it. And so tonight, hear me as we get ready to bring this to a conclusion. First of all, we need to know, number one, it's the Bible, mm. the holy book of the Word of God. And can I share with you tonight that you must believe that it is comprised of both the Old and the New Testament to be the inspired, infallible, and authoritative Word of God, according to Matthew 5 and 18, 2 Timothy 3, 16 through 17. In faith, we hold that the Bible to be the inerrant in the original writing, God breathe, and the complete and final authority for faith and practice, 2 Timothy 3, 16 through 17. While still using uh, the individual writing and styles of the human authors, the Holy Spirit perfectly guided them to ensure they wrote precisely what he wanted written Amen. and without error or omission, mm -hmm. according to 2 Peter 1.21. Not only that, but you need to know that there's only one true and living God who is invested in the triune movement. God the Father, God the Word, God the Holy Ghost. And so tonight, we believe in one God, not three. We can't say God is a trinity because the word trinity means three. The Bible says, Hear, O Israel, your God is one God. And he's one God in the Father. He's one God in the Word. He's one God in the Holy Ghost. And so we believe in one God who is creator of all, according to Deuteronomy 6 and 4, Colossians 1, 16, who has revealed himself in three distinct persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, according to 2 Corinthians 13 and 14. Yet, who is one being, hear me tonight, essence and glory, John 10 and 30. God is eternal, according to Psalms 90 and 2. He ever lives. There's no point where he can ever cease to exist. He's infinite, according to 1 Timothy 1.17, and sovereign, according to Psalms 93 and 1. God is omniscient, which means he knows everything. He's omnipresent, which means he's everywhere at the same time. He's omnipotent, which means he's all-powerful and unchanging, according to Malachi 3 and 6. Lord, have mercy. So tonight, God is holy 
Isaiah 6 and 3, just Deuteronomy 32 and 4, and righteous, Exodus 9 and 27. God is love, 1 John 4 and 8. He's gracious, Ephesians 2 and 8. He's merciful, 1 Peter 1 3. And he's good. Romans 8 and 28. And then I need you to know that a part of the triune God is the Lord Jesus Christ, who came down through 40 and 2 generations that you and I might be brought back into fellowship with the Father. He came to save. He came to heal. He came to deliver. And that he was born of a virgin, not by man, but through the auspices of the Holy Spirit. So he had no part in his blood that was polluted. His blood was pure. And that's the blood that cleanses you. That's the blood that cleanses me. So I need you to understand tonight that there's also the Holy Spirit, which is the third part of the triune God. And he comes to bring us into faith and to bring us into prayer, to bring us into fellowship and to deliver us to a place where we understand who God really is. And so tonight, I need you to understand now, now that we know what the word of God is, we also know that he has placed us in an ark and that ark is called the church. The church is a body of baptized believers. It's not a building of brick and mortar, but it is a group of people who have come to assemble themselves through the word of the living God. And that church tonight is you and me throughout this country and around this world that believe that God so loved the world that he sent his son. And his son said he established a church and that the church would not be prevailed through the gates of hell but that we will overcome and move forward through all of the trials and tempts of the devil. Tonight, I need you to know that we are now moving forward in the word of the living God. And because of that, I need you to know that you need to know that there are things to come. And the things to come is either you're going to be in Christ or you're going to be outside of the things of Christ. And so tonight, you need to know that we believe in the blessed hope according to Titus 2 and 13, and the personal and imminent coming of the Lord Jesus Christ to rapture his saints, according to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, 13 through 18. We believe in the visible and bodily return of the Lord Jesus Christ to the earth with his saints to establish his promised millennial kingdom and from there the kingdom into everlasting and eternity. So tonight, I need you to know that we believe that even in death, the Bible says absent from the body, present with the Lord, yeah. that death cannot keep us from the Lord Jesus Christ. And so tonight, it is my privilege and pleasure to say to you, I believe God, and I believe what God has done for me and for you through his only begotten son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And so tonight, this book is not about a man. This book is about God himself, who has manifested himself in his son to bring you and I back into relationship from where Adam and Eve rebelled and sinned and where the devil thought he had us, but God made a way. And so tonight, I want you to hear me as we move now into 2023. We're going to move now in the word of the living God. We're going to move now into the faith that God has given us that is established on the solid rock. And remember my favorite song on Christ, the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. And so tonight I want you to lean and depend on the word of the living God. And let me invite you wherever you are around the world to know and understand it's now time to get back to the word of the living God. And remember what I said in John chapter 1 verse 1. In the beginning was the word. Mm -hmm. The word was with God and the word was God. I need you to understand now that it's all about Christ. Yes. No other substitutes. No other interruptions. You need to know now to focus and to bring yourself to the purpose that it's all about Christ who came to deliver you and to bring you back into the Father's house. So tonight, Father, in the precious name of Jesus, we thank you for the eternal 
word of the living God, which is your son, the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you for providing him as the substitute to bring us out of sin and shame, to deliver us and bring us back into holiness and righteousness. We thank you tonight that he gave his life willingly yes. by saying, nevertheless, yes. what your will is, is what yes. I will do. And so tonight we give you glory and we give you praise for saving, delivering, and setting us free through the power and the word of yes. the living God. Now, Father, let your oh, word God. abide yes, in us yes, that we might hide it as your word said in our heart that we might not sin against thee. We might let this word be a lamp unto our feet and a light into our path. Give us this day as we get ready to move now toward 2023, yes, a place yes, where we yes, know the yes, light is yes. on and there's no shadows or turning because your word yes, has brought us to a place where we have peace in the spirit of our minds. We have peace in our hearts because we understand and know we are the children of our Heavenly Father. Mm -hmm. And the Lord Jesus Christ is the chief shepherd to lead us now in the path of righteousness. So today we pray for our pastor, Pastor Lois Antoine in Prayer Changes Things yes. Ministry. We pray for LEPC and the extended family that you will have the right of way. And as we cross over now into 2023 on the 31st, we will cross over with the book of books in our hearts yes. and the book of books transforming our minds. Yes. The book of books moving yes. us yes. to higher heights and deeper depths. We give you glory and we give you praise in Jesus mighty name and we say amen. amen. And so tonight amen. as I get ready to close out on Facebook Live and return this lesson now back into the hands of our pastor, Pastor Lois Antoine, let me say to you we wish you a very beautiful, prosperous new year in 2023 in the hand of the Almighty God and in the love of his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And so with that in mind, saying I love you, God bless you, let me return you now into the hands of our pastor, Pastor Lois Antoine of Prayer Changes Things Ministry, who has conducted this Bible study now from January up until this last day, the 27th of December. Let's receive her and give God glory for her ministry and her life. Pastor Lois Antoine, we're back in your hands.